When it comes to corridor modeling, Civil 3D contains a large library of roadway parts right out of the box. That being said, you may have an area of your corridor design that's so unique that it can't be modeled using the default subassemblies. At times like this, you can use Subassembly Composer. This application is included with your Civil 3D installation, and it allows you to create virtually any custom subassembly part. Over the next few lessons, we're going to take a closer look at Subassembly Composer to help you get started creating your own custom subassemblies. To launch Subassembly Composer, I'm going to come down to the Start button, which is slightly off screen here. I will then choose All Programs. I'll choose Autodesk. And inside the Autodesk directory, I'm going to drag all the way down to the bottom. Here we can see Subassembly Composer 2016. Let me mention I'm using Civil 3D 2016 at this time, so I'm going to use the corresponding Subassembly Composer. I will launch the application by clicking the icon right here. Now, I've already got mine open. Let me come down to the Task Bar, also off screen. I'll click that. This is the Subassembly Composer interface. You can see it's made up of multiple panels. We've got the toolbox, flowchart, preview, packet settings, and properties. We'll be looking at all of these panels as we progress through the videos. Let me mention that you can move the panels around. For instance, if I click and hold on the name bar, I can pull the flowchart out and make that a floating palette. If I click and hold on it, you can see these icons floating around on screen. I can use these to dock the palette wherever I like. Using the icons to the outside, I can dock it relative to the entire interface. So if I drag it up and drop it here, it takes up the entire top of my interface. Let me drag that down. Likewise, if I move this panel into another panel, I can use these inner icons to dock it within that panel. Let me choose the left icon, and I can see the flowchart is now on the left side of the preview panel. So you can organize the screen however you like. In the event you'd like to put things back to the default view, we can choose the view pull down, and I'll choose Restore Default Layout. Let me start by apologizing for my screen size. I'm recording at this size such that if you're watching this recording on a mobile device, you'll still be able to read the interface items. If you were using this application on your monitor, the interface will be much larger than mine. Let's do a quick run through of the panels. In the toolbox, we have components that we can use to build our subassemblies. In the big scheme of things, a subassembly is essentially points, links, and shapes. We'll be dragging these items from the toolbox into this flowchart. This is where the structure is created. The preview area is where we can see the drawn view of the object that we're creating. If I come down to the bottom under Properties, this is a lot like the properties that we have in Civil 3D. If I select an object in the flowchart or the preview, I'll see its properties down here. And then the packet settings, let me drag this divider over. The packet settings is where we can do a lot of our maintenance. I can give my subassembly a name. I can define input and output parameters, target parameters, super elevation parameters. I can even create items for the event viewer. So we'll be looking at many of these as we go. Let me drag this back over. So now that we have an idea of how the interface works, in the next session we'll start creating a custom subassembly.